Hey there everyone and welcome back to the Flexbox training. So we are going to again continue our Flexbox training and in this video we are going to talk about the justify content property. And this is a little bit confusing property especially for the new beginners in the Flexbox and especially, especially the point where they try to move from the web to mobile and mobile to web because this is a relative guy and uh, a lot of people don't understand that in a very starting phase. So let me just bring up my folder there. And we're gonna copy and uh, paste that guy here. And oops, I think I just pasted a previously copied. I'm gonna trash that, copy and paste that. Yep, it's the same. So let's call it as 02, there we go. And I'm gonna open this guy in my Atom. I do have lots of other editors being installed, but hey, this is good. Okay, looks pretty good. No big deal so far and in fact I would like to fire my package of Adam server. It's going to fire up somewhere. Usually always fire that side of the screen. Okay let me bring up in the recording area. So there we go. Nothing big, extraordinary. It's just usual stuff. Okay now let me just uh, press command shift D to duplicate a lot of divisions. In fact one more and we're gonna call this as one and uh, let's start here. So oops two, this is going to be three, and four, and five. Let's just go with the five this time. Okay, so what is this justify content? And before even I move to the justify content, let me also mention that first of all, we are learning all the properties which are applied to the outer container here. Now these are items, so we are going to learn how we can apply the properties to individual items as well, but that's going to come up later on. We are moving into a very good plan that is we, have, we are having here. So the plan is really simple. First of all, understand all the properties which can be applied directly to this container. And then we are going to focus how we can uh, apply all of these properties uh, later on. So let's talk about the justify content. Okay, so let's go into the flex CSS and there we go. And we are going to have a container, container, and this container is selected. And what we have to say is, you know that already, we are going to first say display flex. And as soon as I say display flex, uh, the default is row. So the default display property is to just go as row. That is okay. But I want to do a couple of things extra here for a little bit more clarity and that is going to I'm going to apply border properties let's just say one pixel solid and uh, black would be fine in this case so that we can understand what is our content area where our individual element can go on and what we can do with that. Okay now let's talk about uh, our property of the hero of this movie which is going to be justify content. Okay. Now the default justify content is flex start and you will notice it doesn't make any difference because obviously that's the default one. And one more thing interesting here is you can see that it automatically uh, gives you a certain height and width for your element. Now let me try something else here if I just write a lot of ones there and there we go and save that. Now notice automatically this guy is taking a little bit more space compared to others. And that is actually the default property here. But again, we will learn later on how we can how we can define a specific property uh, so that it just it takes how much space we want and the space division and all of these things. Uh, the good part of the flexbox is it understands uh, the ratios quite good. So you can say that hey, this is going to be my hundred percent ratio, and I want to give two thirds to this guy and the rest for all of this. So yes, we can do that. Really helpful in the mobile world but I can understand it's a little bit confusing right now. So let's not get ahead of ourselves and talk about that. So I'm gonna keep it one there, okay? And let's go back here. So the default property is flex start, okay? Now, uh, we previously read about uh, the flex direction as well. So I'm gonna comment this out for a moment and I'm gonna show you a difference here. So I'm gonna say flex direction there we go and as soon as I say I want row reverse what happened what used to happen is now the row is going to be aligned in the reverse manner from one two three but let's just say you don't want to have that in that case the lifesaver is justify content you want that content should be aligned to the right side but not in the reverse order 
So in that case, this flex direction is of no use. So we are going to just delete that. And in that case, uh, this guy is useful. In that case, you have to say, hey, I don't want my flex to get start from the start. I want to start from end. Okay. Now, notice that all content is aligned to the right side, but specifically the order is super important here. It just says one, two, three, four, and five. Exactly what a lot of you might be looking up for. Okay, that is good. Now, uh, one thing that you can see that these are all being squished up because this is using the entire space being available to it. Now, if I just say that uh, the height of my container is going to be, let's just say 100 viewport, uh, 100 viewport height, what is going to happen? It's going to stretch all of this. So it's using all of the properties, okay? So I hope this doesn't make any confusion for you. I'm gonna remove this because I think we are happy with the default properties, what it's doing here, okay? So we learned that we have two just two properties so far, justify content for flex start, the default one, and flex end for the end guy. And this is a super, super confusing point for a lot of people, okay? We have seen here that the justify content always work on the axis from left to right, okay? That's good. But what happens, what is important part is justify on always and always work for the main axis. Always listen to this. It's always work for main axis, okay? Now, what will happen when you will say justify content and flex end, it is going to just push everything onto the end right side onto a web device. But what is going to happen in the mobile devices, especially in the React Native, the main axis is not horizontal. It's top to bottom. So that is why your flex and actually brings everything, everybody's here at the bottom. So make sure you understand it's a relative term. Whenever you're going to say justify content, it always works at the main axis. And always remember what is your main axis in the web? It's uh, your left to right, in the mobile, it's top to bottom. So why to rely always on the main axis or something? Always rely on the things uh, which you define. So always mention your flex direction, your display flex and all these things, okay? So it's always a good advice to always mention that uh, if you want to have flex direction, just like that, whatever you like to mention, uh, just keep on mentioning that. So this is what happens in your mobile device, uh, whether you mention this guy or not. So my advice would be not to rely on the default things. Always uh, just mention whatever you want to have. So in this case, if you want, hey, I want flex direction to be row, always mention that. It's a good safety tip there, okay? So now let's move ahead further. So we have seen the flex start, flex end, and yes, you guessed that right, there is a center as well. Oops, come on. And there we go, center, which is pretty beautiful, which just aligns the things at the center. Again, it doesn't work from top to bottom. From top to bottom, we will talk about later on about the align items and things. Right now, we are uh, worried about just one property, which is justify content. So see how simple it is uh, to justify, or uh, to centerish the things. But there are a few beautiful things as well. Now, it has two more properties. The one is space around, which is really awesome. And we can see now all of these are taking just equal space. And the beauty about this guy is in just one line, what you're doing is pretty amazing. I'll just add a couple of more. So Command Shift D, and I'm not going to change five here, just I want a new elements. So notice, I didn't have to do the math of spacing and all these things between just Flexbox does it everything for me and just gives me equal spacing between them. And I'm pretty happy. But some of you don't want this because it leaves a space at the start and at the end as well. Okay, your wish is being listening. So your wish is listened here by the Flexbox. So what it provides you is apart from the space around, we have space between as well, which is not so impressive at first, but hey, sometimes it's a need. Okay, now what it does, uh, it just gets you the space. So this much space is here for this one and the left side of the two is also having space. So it just combines the two things here. But it removes the left side of the first element and the right side of the last element. So there you go. And what I like best part about is I can just add my divisions without worrying about how many elements should be there in one row and all these things. It's It just works smooth and just like that. And I really love this property. Okay, so I hope, uh, let me quickly summarize what do we have. Uh, the first and foremost advice is uh, that your justify content always work with the main axis. 
and for the web main axis is left to right horizontal and for the mobile it's from top to bottom and then we have learned a lot of properties about the justify content which was flex start flex end center space around and space between and the most important advice is always mention your flex direction i know it's already there it's by default but hey you always be you should be double sure so make sure you always define that okay pretty interesting and pretty easy stuff uh, with the justify content here okay i'll catch you up in the next video